Coming up to the College of Humanities and Social Science sign an MOU with Huatian County. We'll learn how earthquakes can severely affect residents living in Taiwan. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Helen now. Thank you for joining us. In the Philippines, a recent bed of heavy rain washed through Marikina City, wiping out a local dike and collapsing homes located near the dike. Volunteers visited the homeowners with relief items and consolation cash to help them through the difficult days ahead. Meanwhile, in Japan, city volunteers from Tokyo visited the hard hit Ibaraki Prefecture to offer a helping hand to victims of Typhoon Etau. Waters from Typhoon Eta receded. On September 13th, Tsuji volunteers in Tokyo mobilized to conduct disaster assessments. Volunteers made the heavily flooded Jozo in Ibaraki Prefecture their first stop. Though there weren't many volunteers, they still tried their best to help. A total of 12 volunteers from Tokyo came. Three stayed at the city hall to help distribute food items. Nine went to a flood victim's home to assist in cleaning. At Mr. Takimoto's home, volunteers first moved the tatami flooring outside, then repeatedly rinse cleaned the room before using a rag to remove any excess water. Mr. Takimoto was very happy we came to help and was surprised to learn that we're Taiwanese. The cleanup effort went beyond his expectations. He welcomes us back and invited us to hold tea gatherings here. Tsuji volunteers plan to do a week of disaster relief in the hard-hit flood zone and will include more cleanup of homes and working with local government offices to provide hot meals for flood victims. Meanwhile, in the Philippines' Marikina City, half of Remedio's home has fallen into the water. We used to wash our laundry in the river when the water was still clean. Actually, it was just a stream before. This is not the river. The river is across the street. Recent heavy rains and strong currents caused the already fragile foundation of Remedio's home to collapse into the dike. Also victim to the same soil erosion is Nieves Pianeta. I grew up here with my siblings. I can't believe it's gone. That's the hardest part for me to accept. The dike's collapse destroyed four homes and damaged 12 more. To offer some relief, city volunteers arrived with daily necessities and emergency cash. We are grateful for this relief from Tsuji. We can use the money to purchase food and other necessities. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. With the homes no longer safe to live in, Tsuji volunteers came with a helping hand to speed up recovery efforts of the disaster victims. Civil unrest in Myanmar in the 1980s forced millions of refugees to find safety in neighboring countries, including Malaysia. However, as Malaysia does not recognize refugee status, the over 150,000 refugees currently residing there continually face the risk of arrest or deportation, as well as being banned for legal employment or public schooling. Fortunately, starting in 2004, Tzadi has been working with the UN with programs to assist the refugees with medical and educational coverage. UNHCR, currently Malaysia, is home to 152,830 refugees, 93 percent of whom come from Myanmar, with the remaining 7 percent coming from the countries of Sri Lanka, Somalia, Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan. As Malaysia has not signed the 1951 Refugee Convention, refugees in Malaysia are not recognized as such. 
instead consider illegal immigrants, they are at constant risk of deportation and have no access to public health care or schooling. Here in Kuala Lumpur, these small rooms are where many refugees have found shelter. City volunteers are a familiar face here, offering help when and where needed. Four years ago, they brought this child a prosthetic leg and the chance to start school. Sixty-four-year-old Nirbanu and her family face economic uncertainty daily, often wondering where their next meal will come from. Yet they are one of the lucky ones now being under the care of Tsuji and Tima. We're so happy to have the doctor here to give us checkups. Seeing how you all made a special trip here to visit us is incredibly moving. By coming to see them, we can stay on top of their health problems. For example, one of them is a diabetic. So we want to understand what she eats and drinks. Suji has been looking after refugees in Malaysia since 2004, and in 2005 and again in 2007, the NGO signed a memorandum of cooperation with the UNHCR in Malaysia. The two organizations are now doing their best to meet the refugees' medical and educational needs. They have been uh, deprived of education because of their status. They do not hold a legal document and so the government does not allow them access to education. Although they face many frustrations and disappointments in their adopted country, we hope that this clinic will, at the very least, help them physically. In 2007, through UNHCR at Siji Education Centers, opened their doors to hundreds of ecstatic children. I'm so happy because I can go to school. I want to study and after I grow up, help lead others. Every year, the volunteers also take the students on educational field trips. Actually, you can learn science. Okay, science is a very important language and then at least they see the animals face to face. Since 2008, a team of volunteers have treated more than 90,000 medical cases, while Tsuji has brought the possibility of an education to 3,000 children. One day, these refugees will find a new life in another country or back in their own country. Until that day comes, Tsuji will be there for them here in Malaysia, helping light up their way with love and support. In order to strengthen the industrial development in Hualien and to nurture more local talent, the Tsuji College of Humanities and Social Science signed a memorandum of understanding with the Hualien County Cultural Affairs Bureau on September 14th. This collaboration hopes to help the school students to be more competitive in the workforce upon graduation. On September 14th, to give its students more opportunities, the Tsuji College of Humanities and Social Science signed a memorandum of understanding with the Hualien County Cultural Affairs Bureau for Education and Academic Research Cooperation. We have come to understand that students of today not only need an education while in school, but also actual hands-on experience of community service to really fully demonstrate what they have learned. The school hopes this collaboration will benefit both the students and their future workplace. What's important for our students is cooperation of local resources. I think this is what this partnership will do. It will create new opportunities for our students. With this collaboration in place, not only do the students benefit, but Hualien County as well, as this cultivation of local talents enriches the community at large. Participating in Tsuji's recent musical adaptation of the Water Repentance Sutra in Malaysia were several members of the country's Tsuji Performance Association. Recently at a tea gathering at the Jingsi Ho in Kuala Lumpur, volunteers and participants came together to share what their participation has meant to them and what it taught regarding karma, compassion and being a model for others. Following their recent musical adaptation of the Water Repentance Sutra, members of the Tsuji Performers Association finished with a greater understanding of karma and the need to do their part for the world. As an actor, you need to be a model for others. 
Only then you are worthy of the title idol. Whether you are a false idol or true bodhisattva depends on your heart. After the sutra adaptation came to an end, they all made a vow to join us in Siji to work on behalf of others. Actor Chen Peijiang, who loved to fish since young, came to deeply regret his past behavior. I should have felt remorse long ago, but that day was the first time I knew what I had done was wrong. It was then that I decided I would never fish again or take life in any way. I came down with dengue fever last week. Today I told my doctor that I had to attend this event, as I wanted to share my experiences with the other bodhisattvas in the performance. Volunteers hope that the seeds of compassion and goodness that have been planted in the hearts of these celebrities will guide them in making the right choices in the years to come. Taiwan was just chosen to be one of the 10 most vulnerable countries in the world by Standard and Poor's due to the threat of earthquakes. In a new series that begins this week, we'll be examining disasters, whether man-made or natural, that put the country's citizens at risk. And the first of our reports is none other than the threat of earthquakes. <laughs> The 921 earthquake occurred along the Chelongpu Fault. As you can see clearly, on one side is gravel, while this side is mostly sand. A shift occurs along the Chelongpu Fault once every 200 to 300 years. Each fault has its own cycle, and there are 33 active faults in Taiwan. Due to the densely packed fault lines, the country's geology is actually very fragile. When earthquakes do occur, human lives are lost due to collapses of structures, and thus densely populated urban areas are at risk. When energy accumulates in tectonic plates and is not released periodically by seismic activities, when a quake does occur, the impact will be quite severe. The Shanjiao Fault begins in Shulin District to the south and travels northward for 74 kilometers, all the way out to the sea. If an earthquake occurs here, the whole Taipei Basin will sink. When earthquakes happen, the soil loses its strength and stiffness. This is the so-called soil liquefaction. Taipei's basin geography and soil liquefaction will all amplify the destructive power of an earthquake. When soil liquefaction is amplified, the building sitting on top will be at risk. 38% of all buildings in Taipei City are more than 42 years old. In Datong, Wanhua, and Zhongzhen districts, the ratio exceeds 50%. If a magnitude 6 quake occurred, more than 1,000 buildings will be destroyed. In the case of a magnitude 7 quake, the number spikes above 4,000 buildings. We're behind the Sulin incinerator plant where the Sanjiao Fault passes through. About every one dozen kilometers along the fault line is a survey station set up by the Central Geological Survey. We can detect any movement on the surface through this GPS station. If there's any shift in underground water, the data will be sent immediately to the server here. Everyone knows that an earthquake will occur, but we just don't know when. In spite of advancements in technology, we still cannot forecast properly. Though earthquake forecasting is currently impossible, an estimate could be made by studying the cycle of seismic activities in the region. By studying the data, geology professor Li Xiti estimates a major earthquake should occur in Hualien by 2025. If you look at two previous major earthquakes in the region, then you can conclude that a major earthquake should occur in Taiwan by 2025. We really need to be on alert. 
Scientists estimate that a major tremor should occur in 10 years. However, quakes above 5.0 in magnitude have already been occurring quite frequently. Before the March 21st earthquake, researchers of National Central University noticed that the concentration of ionospheres above Taiwan dropped suddenly. Tectonic shifts create electric fields that generate charge and currents, which affect conductivity some 100 kilometers above us. This cube weighs less than one kilogram, but it is the first of its kind to detect changes in the ionosphere. This is the NCU Tesseract. As this sensor orbits around the planet, high-energy particles flow through it, allowing it to sense changes in plasma movement. As scientists frantically search for a way to forecast earthquakes, people living in Taiwan should also prepare themselves, for no one is completely safe from such disasters. As city's founder, Master Zheng Yin, tours around Taiwan, she made an unplanned stop in Yunlin, which was a big surprise to Walt City volunteers in the region. In less than a day, a gathering was organized at the Yunlin City Liaison Office. Let's take a look. Master Zheng Yin's tour around Taiwan has brought her to Yunlin. As the stop was unplanned, city volunteers in the area only learned of the news the day before and quickly arrived in the Yunlin liaison office to meet with their beloved master on Monday afternoon. <laughs> Doing as their master instructed, Zijie volunteers helped lay interlocking bricks for the temporary classrooms of Liu Jia Junior High in Jiayi, thus literally paving the way for students there to receive an education. The principal, just retired, came in person to convey her gratitude. We told our students that the knowledge they receive in school is like the sun, while compassion is like the moon. Only by having the sun and moon as one, Will they have a bright future? People are always asking, where are the Cixi volunteers? We are right where we are needed. The master also reminded everyone to continue to practice her teachings. Wherever there is discord of body and mind, there will be suffering. The Master hopes that her disciples may continue to empathize with those in need and help ease their suffering. In the mountains of Jilong lives care recipient Mr. Zhang, who was diagnosed with colorectal cancer last year. Worried about Zhang and his son, the local borough had contacted Cixi for help. When volunteers arrived, they were stunned to see that the father and son had taken a residence in a modified duck coop. With the father sick and the son only making minimum wage, times were hard, but the family got by. However, following the destruction of their home during Typhoon Saudalor, the family finally accepted the volunteers' offer for our help. Here's more. Walking to the home of care recipient Mr. Zhang, the volunteers see this. This ramshackle shed open to the elements is, in fact, a duck coop that has been transformed into a home. It is here that Zhang and his son have been living for over a decade. I, was basically going I had an apartment, but it was auctioned off after the 921 earthquake. So I came here and built this and have been living here since. The house sits on the land of a friend and is hand built by Zhang. Unfortunately, the shelter suffered greatly under the high winds of Typhoon Saldalor. However, with wood boards donated by friends, Mr. Zhang has quickly rebuilt his home. There, I will build a bedroom, and here I will build a living room. There will be more space that way. When friends come for tea or a chat, it will be easier to find a seat. He originally survived doing odd jobs, but after he got sick and needed chemo, his health and strength have gotten worse. 
Mr. Zhang's wife left him after the birth of their son, leaving father and son to survive on their own. After Mr. Zhang was diagnosed with colorectal cancer, the local borough had called on Ziji for help. I have to take pain medication every day. The pain is too strong otherwise. Currently, I'm unable to work. He asked us to assess the state of the unfinished areas. We're now providing him with financial subsidies. With volunteers by their side, this family now sees hope for a better future. <laughs> to help those in need broaden their horizons, city volunteers in Chile recently donated computers to churches and Ponta Arenas in San Ramon. Thanks to this donation, children attending daycare classes at a church in San Ramon will now be able to expand their skill sets with the use of their computers. Meanwhile, a priest and his wife in Ponta Arenas will be starting a computer class using the donated computers. In Ponta Arenas, Chile, it snows during winter time, and many get depressed having to stay indoors for long periods of time. This priest and his wife will now be able to start a computer class, thanks to the six computers Cizhi volunteers donated to their church. Although the children here cannot understand Chinese, they still felt the joy of watching the volunteers' body language. Turning to San Ramon, at another church, city volunteers donated 10 computers, hoping to broaden the children's scope through information technology. That city volunteers' donation will help the children improve. We are grateful they held such a formal donation ceremony, through which the children learned many important principles. City volunteers brought supplies and taught us to be grateful to all living beings, as well as protect the planet Earth. While these children come from impoverished families and can easily go astray, the church volunteers guide them with love. During the ceremony, city volunteers also demonstrated ways to prepare vegetarian dishes, expanding the children's palates as well as minds. We go to Myanmar at the end of the show, where local city volunteers held a 7th Lunar Month Blessing Ceremony for members of local Chinese community. During the event, city volunteers encouraged everyone to stop burning joss paper and replace meat offerings with flowers. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching our headlines. Goodbye.